considered it it's low oxygen high co2 but it's also right here now it's um, your dead space is full of gas exchanged air which is low oxygen and high co2 so then when you take a breath in you have to breathe in that dead space area all right anyways that's how the airway works and it'll make sense and be important in a minute all right so the nasal cannula it goes with the curvature like this into the nose um, i find when i'm putting it on patients if i put i do this and i get it lined up and then I hold here, put it behind one ear, hold, because if you don't hold, you're pulling on it and it's awkward. Put this one behind this ear and then tighten the bowl. All right, that's one way. Um, it is not uncommon for you to come in and the patients have this backwards and if the curves are backwards, it's just, it's gonna be hitting up against the nares and the flow of oxygen is not gonna be what it should be. Also patients, when they're asleep, they don't know it. They rub it, and it, it gets dislodged. And a lot of times, you'll go in, and it's on one nair, only one. Um, or it's up here, or a patient has completely put it up here because they're tired of it blowing in their face. So common ways to find it if it's not on the floor. All right. Um, some people don't like it linking behind their ears and coming down this way, which is technically the right way. Um, so you can put it on. This way, making sure the contours are right. Put it over them like you would a necklace. Attach it here. Pull the back tight. Tighten down the bolo. And make sure it's above the ears. So that's one way. Um, this is not as comfortable if you're sleeping because it's got this little lump right there in the back. So there's that. All right, this is oxygen, nasal cannula. Nasal cannula is a low flow device because it does not meet all the patient's demands meaning if they increase their respiratory rate or increase their depth of breathing, the FiO2 that they get goes down. Um, nasal cannula, you can give, um, Egan says um, a quarter to six liters per minute, but Mosby's is one to eight liters and one to eight is more. What you're gonna see in the hospital and um, common for the board, somewhere it's between six and eight. Um, usually they're not gonna give you the option of seven, um, it'd be 10 or like five. So you can make that decision easier. Again, once you hit four liters, you have to eat, you have to add heat and moisture, which we'll talk about in, in two labs. All right, so it's a low flow device, quarter liter per minute to six or eight liters per minute. And it gives 22 to 40% FiO2, it's variable. Um, it's a good device. The advantages to it is it's cheap. It's easy to wear. Uh, patient patients typically are comfortable wearing it. Um, if the patient wants to talk or um, eat or have um, family connections or whatever and want to be awake and talking, um, it's not covering their face, so it's easier to communicate. Um, disadvantages, it breaks down around the ears and around the nose. And again, we don't use petroleum-based object um, gels to help with that rash. Uh, only water-soluble-based gels because oxygen is combustible and petroleum is combustible and the two of them together could, if, if flame is near, it would ignite. All right, disadvantages. Those were all the disadvantages. Yes, I think so. Okay. Um, catheter I don't have one to show you they're very rare you will see one they're not putting them in anymore they're not using them anymore um, there might be one or two that still have them transtracheal catheter I talked about in the class lecture powerpoints and um, they're not as common but you will see them and there's one lady that goes to st. Joseph's fairly frequently and she loves to show hers off simple mask Right, this is a simple mask. Simple mask. It is a mask that goes over your nose and mouth. It has these little holes on the sides, the ports. They have little dots. You can't put your finger through it. Later, you'll learn about an aerosol mask that you can put your fingers through. Um, this is the simple mask. 
Um, this is the step up from a nasal cannula. It has the metal band that you can tighten around the nose so that it doesn't blow into the eyeballs, and then the elastic band to tighten it. So you would attach the flow meter to the wall, attach the attach the mask to the flow meter, turn it up to at least five liters, um, because if it's less than five liters, then when we exhale, we were just talking about how the last part of the breath you exhale has CO2 in it. So you exhale that, there's CO2. And then when you breathe in, you're breathing in more CO2. But if this gets disconnected or occluded, it, where flow, no flow is going through it, you're exhaling and breathing in CO2 over and over again, and you could die. So it has to be five liters because at five liters, that's enough flow going through this continually to wash out the CO2 and give you more oxygen. So you're going to put it on the patient's head like so. Always make sure your oxygen devices are on and functioning before you put them on the patient so they don't die. All right, so you've got it on the face. Tighten this around the nose to just to have a better fit. Um, some people like it over their ears. Some people like it under their ears. It does not matter. And tighten. Cinch it down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Ooh, I am your father. All right, simple mask. Um, it has to be on five liters or more, we will try to trick you into checkoffs and ask you to put us on a simple mask at four liters. And as long as you don't actually set us up on it, um, you will pass. If you start setting it up and you correct yourself, great. If you start doing it and you follow through, not good. You'll be doing it again. All right, so then you just take it off. All right, simple mask. Has to be at five liters. Goes from five to 10 liters. Ow, that really hurt. 5 to 10 liters, it's 35 to 50 percent FiO2 is what this will give. It's variable. Um, advantages, it's quick, it's easy. They make them in adult and kid sizes. Um, it gives a fairly decent FiO2 range, up to 50 percent. That's pretty good. That's right at the level of toxicity, so you don't want to do too much more than that if you don't have to. Um, if you are a mouth breather, this works better than a nasal cannula because if you're breathing through your mouth, the flow going in your nose doesn't really do much. So good for that. Disadvantages. Claustrophobic people won't wear it. It's hard to talk through. If you have, um, if you are nauseous and vomiting, it is a choking hazard because if the patient can't pull it off on their own or isn't cognizant enough because of whatever's wrong with them to pull it off, they have this on and they vomit. The next first thing you do right after you vomit is you inhale. So you're going to go. And then you will suck all the vomit into your lungs, which is called aspiration. Anything that's not supposed to be in your lungs that's in your lungs is aspiration. You can aspirate anything. Water, split pea soup, pretzels, salt, vomit. Anyways, disadvantages are those claustrophobic, vomit, um, hard to hear, hard to talk with, not as comfortable, um, have to use a higher flow. So if you only want it, if you only need it to give, excuse me, like 20 something percent FiO2, this is not your device because it only, it starts at 35. So if the doctor wants you